The thing that's so exciting for me working with Gaston Levy's heirs and working with these three restituted paintings is the way the story actually adds to the pictures and adds to our understanding of the artworks themselves. Paul Siniak's Kiddie Clichy is a perfect work from his earlier period of pure pointillism. The Siniak oil painting of the Golden Horn from 1907 shows an artist at the absolute peak of his powers. In the Gelée Blanche, Pizarro obsessively tried to make this perfect and get every line, every dot of colour absolutely correct. And as you can see from the picture, he succeeded. Most people know Gaston Levy just as the author of the first catalogue Risney for the works of Paul Siniak. But having done research into his life, we now know that Gaston Levy was the most remarkable collector in pre war Paris. In the 1920s, he was a very successful property developer, and most of his developments were in the area in which the art galleries and the auctioneers practiced in Paris. It's easy to imagine that when Gaston Levy went about his day to day life, he dropped into the galleries, he went into the auction house of Hotel Drouot and collected works. We can see that he was a patron of the arts. He didn't just passively collect from dealers. He commissioned 107 watercolours by Paul Signac of the ports of France. Gaston Levy had been a friend of Signac since the 1920s and we know that they went on holiday together and in 1932 he wrote the first listing which is today even now used by scholars. <laughs> Gaston Levy was Jewish and when the Nazis approached Paris he took the wise precaution of trying to secure his own safety and his family's safety and also the safety of his remarkable art collection. He went first to his Chateau Les Bouffins and he took much of his art collection there for safekeeping and then he, his wife and his daughter fled to Tunisia. He lost much of his art collection to the depredations of the Nazis. He certainly lost works of art in his apartment in Paris and there are also records of artworks being taken from his chateau. Unfortunately, Gaston Levy died before he'd recovered most of his art collection. And so we're today reliant on the list which he lodged with the Germans in 1958 to try and reconstruct what he had before the war. The three paintings which Sotheby's has been asked to sell on behalf of the Levy heirs really demonstrate the different ways in which works of art traveled after World War II. The wonderful Pizarro and the Signac of Istanbul were both as it were, hiding in plain sight in France. They were both on loan from the French government to major museums, to the Musée d'Orsay and to a museum in the south of France. The 1880s Signac, the opus work, in a way has an even more remarkable history. It was discovered in the apartment of Cornelius Gerlitt, who was a private citizen living in Munich a few years ago. He was the son of the Nazi collaborationist art dealer Hildebrand Gerlitt, and it was one of 1,400 paintings which were discovered by the German authorities with no apparent known owner. In addition to their history, these really are three incredibly important and beautiful paintings. The Gelée Blanche is the most remarkable painting. When you look at it, you get drawn into the maelstrom of colour, the pigments the artist used to try and convey heat and the light and the smoke, the young girl and the child standing in front of the fire, and you can see the haze of the hot air from the fire meeting the cold air of dawn, just making the house, making the trees just slightly shimmery, which is the most extraordinary effect. The painting was painted in 1888, and we know from records that it actually took the artist more than a year to complete. One of the other unusual things about the Gelée Blanche is the format. It's much, much larger than most works by Pizarro, and also it's a square. So it reminds me of Gustav Klimt and, of, and later paintings, but it's painted in 1888. It's a remarkable, groundbreaking format, and it's really an artist at the height of his powers trying to convey not only an academic method of showing color and showing form, but also an idea and a dream of colour. The exciting thing about seeing these two works by Paul Signac together is you can see the development of the artist. In the first work, the opus picture from 1887 of the Quai de Clichy, you can see him at his most formal, elegant, refined, very painstaking, but an incredibly beautiful surface. He painted the work at a time when he was working with Van Gogh and other artists working in Paris. And here he was painting, in a way, a very simple scene, a scene of the quay alongside a canal. You can see in the background of the image the cranes that carry coal up to the gas works. But he took this very mundane scene, he took an industrial scene and made it a picture of real deep beauty. In the second work, The Golden Horn in Istanbul, painted in 1907, you can see the joy of colour. Paul Sinek's views of Istanbul were some of his most famous scenes, and they really allowed the artist to show off his mastery of colour and of paint, the thickness and the use of his paint, the way he reduces form into pure colour and the joyful 
chromatic noise. And in this picture, you can see Istanbul at that perfect moment after dawn, when the ships are still, when the water is clear. It's that perfect moment that Signac captures with this brightness of color and the joy. One of the most important things about restitution is the way we're not just involved in returning artworks to people and heirs who lost them in World War II, but we're also returning the story to the artworks and we're restoring the story of collectors. We now know that Gaston Levy wasn't just a static collector, he was a friend of the artist, he holidayed with the artist, he commissioned the artist, he was actively involved in the creative process. So in bringing these pictures back to the family and restituting the pictures, we're also restoring the memory of the man and the memory of his achievements. Thank you.